This is the OPS Mega 2 Power Station. It has a built-in UPS, a smart app, and it will charge so fast you will get scared. I'm kind of kidding about the scared part, but it seriously charges fast. It kind of makes me wonder. Last time I did a battery from this company, it was 1500 watts and I didn't know how to pronounce the word. So I just said, oopies, opus. Anyway, I actually looked it up this time. It's opes, like opes. Like they got a slogan, it's like no oops with oops. Anyways, oops has been on the market now for a few years. They're starting to make a name for themselves. They came out with a brand new product line. It's the Mega Series. This is the Mega 2. I don't know why I'm pointing to the floor. I mean, this is the Mega 2 and they got like a three and a five. And yes, Opes did send this battery out for free for a review, but that does not affect my review in any way. The following specs should give you a pretty good idea of what the mega lineup is supposed to do, which is basically power an RV or supply emergency power to a lot of things in your house when you really need it. But this thing has a 2,500 watt ability with a 5,400 watt surge. Of course, it has a lithium iron phosphate batteries and has a total capacity of 2,048 watt hours. And the coolest thing with this spec and why it's geared towards either RV usage or just some really massive backup in your house is that this battery is expandable so you can buy extra batteries I think they're like 800 bucks a pop and you can add another 2048 watt hours now I want to get to all the ports on the front which it has a pretty decent amount but what I really want to get to is the charging I want to talk about it because it blows my mind makes me a little nervous and I have absolutely no merit to say I should be nervous I just feel nervous talking about it. So on the side of this battery, you have multiple inputs, the main one being the AC, which is actually a 20 amp electrical plug, and then a set of Anderson plugs that takes voltages from 12 up to 150 volts at 30 amps. This thing charges at 3,700 watts, 3,700 watts. That is insane. That's where fires go to start, and that scares the crap out of me. Okay, maybe not 3,700 watts all the time. It actually only charges from the wall at 1,600 watts, but then you can add on an additional solar array to charge it with both of them at the same time, the additional solar array being a maximum capacity of 2,100 watts. And it's not really the voltage that scares me. I mean, you have to respect voltage, but what really scares me is charging lithium batteries that fast, especially if you're doing it all the time. It just kind of weirds me out a little bit. I'm not saying they can't do it, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, I'm just saying that I wouldn't do it. At least not unless it was like an emergency and like zombies were coming and I needed to charge my device in like 45 minutes, which is what that can do at 3,700 watts, zero to 100, holy crap. But setting it up as a day-to-day -day thing, I would not do that. In fact, when it comes to charging, it does charge, like I said, at 1,600 watts, but you have the option to change it. Although it's not available to change it in the app, but I'll get to that in a minute. You have the available options to change it from 1600 watts down to 800 watts, which is actually really nice. One, it helps make your lithium iron phosphate batteries last a little bit longer. Remember they have that 3000 cycle thing where you still have 80% of your capacity. This is all lithium iron phosphate batteries. Most of them anyways, depending on the grade. Anyway, faster charging equals more heat equals more damaging to the battery. So in my mind, it's like, hey, keep the heat down unless I really need to charge it fast. I like 800 over 1600 for just like a normal day to day. Maybe it's just cycling through using solar, whatever. I don't know. If I'm not in a rush, I like 800. Now that Pansy Jason got that out of his system, real Jason is going to come in and say, I'm probably going to be charging this thing at 1600 watts. However, I would definitely want to make sure that I have it on a 20 amp circuit, especially if it's going to be charging for multiple hours at a time. Now, this thing is actually compatible with just a 15 amp plug in, but this is the 20 amp computer outlet port thing, right? So this isn't like a normal, what do they call it? A, a D port or whatever. This isn't the normal one. It's a 20 amp version, but this is a 15 amp plug. And the only reason why I'm pointing this out is that if you were to plug this into a standard outlet, let's say a 15 amp outlet, and let's say there's nothing else on that circuit, whatever it's connected to, it's nothing else on it. This can draw, I want to say about 16 amps from that outlet. Just depending on how it's charging, what the voltage in your house, it can draw up to 16 amps. And if it's doing that consistently, it's going to be creating heat and then you could eventually pop your circuit breaker or worse. But that is why the 800 option is nice because, hey, maybe you don't have an outlet for it and that's completely okay. Which, by the way, if you want to switch it, there's like this combo thing where you hold the 
IoT, make sure it's unplugged, the IoT button and the DC button down. You like hold that down and I'll demonstrate on the screen, but you hold that down and that switches it from high to low that allows you to change it, but you cannot do this from the app. You have to do it with this. And in my experience, you have to have it unplugged, switch it, and then plug it back in. Now on the smart app that I keep taking little stabs at, it does have a smart app you download on your phone and it works pretty well for the most part, but it definitely is not one of those things that is a finished product. I feel like there's a lot of work to be done at the app, like it connects, it actually communicates, and you have some options that you can change, but it's very basic. The biggest thing with the app is that you can go in there and you can just turn off outlets, like the AC inverter or the DC inverters, which don't get me wrong, in terms of like having this set up in an RV in a different room, you wanna turn things on and off, especially if you're going to bed and you just wanna turn it off, that's perfect. But other things like changing the recharge rate are not in there, and I really feel like it should be because it's a crucial option and having a software option and do it from your phone would just be nice. Now the AC inverter is a pure sine wave inverter. I have this little oscillator thing that I purchased. I hooked it up and I did not see any squares. I'm about 80% sure I used the tool right. So there's that. And it has a built-in UPS function. So if you have this plugged into the wall, have something else plugged into this and your power goes out, this will automatically kick in with power. And here's the crazy thing on the AC power, right? Not only is it the pure sine wave, which is kind of the standard with things like this, but this one actually puts out a roughly 120 volts. During my discharge test, I was testing the capacity of this battery just to see how well the batteries did. And while it was getting towards the end, I ran into two different things. One, the voltage dropped significantly. I mean, at the beginning, I started with 119, I popped it up to the 2480 watts, something like that. And when I got down towards the lower end of the battery, I was getting voltages of as low as 104 to 109, something like that. The second thing I ran into, and yeah, I was testing it, hitting it pretty hard to do this discharge test, but I made my own little tester thing that's capable of handling higher wattage than the you know regular plug-in one that I have. And I was running through my discharge test and it was on, it was doing its thing. I was watching it, I had the camera, on, I was going to catch the moment it died. And then I got errors. It gave me the error message of E002, which I at first assumed was heat related, but turns out was actually a low battery voltage cutoff, which really explains the drop in the AC voltage from the starting of 118 to the finishing of like 107. Since I originally thought it was heat related, I kept turning it off, letting it cool down and then resuming my testing. But turns out it was just the low voltage. To be fair, I didn't run into any problems till it got to the very end of the battery life. Okay, let's backtrack a little bit. The ports, the AC outputs, it has four 20 amp capable plugs and it has an RV plug, the TT30, that is a 30 amp, 110 to 120 volt, depending on what it's putting out. This is a camper plug, so you can actually plug this into a camper. But wait, there's more, and this is pretty cool. It's a new thing for me, at least I'm pretty sure it is. The Anderson out on this is a 12 volt system, up to 30 amps. Now I personally don't use this, but in like an RV world or a mobile world, something like that, and you're setting up a whole system, let's say you got your, your fans, lights, radios, fridge. Yeah, there's a fridge in there, 12 volt. If you have a whole DC system set up like you would in an RV, you can plug in this Anderson, pull up to 30 amps without having to turn on the AC inverter, which is really nice. That's less power waste, more battery capacity, and probably quieter. I mean, there's probably other benefits, but it's just nice not having to turn this on, convert it over to AC, have your AC converter, turn it over to uh, 12 volt DC, and then power your RV lifestyle. On top of that, it doesn't have wireless charging, but it does have two 100 watt USB-C ports along with those, uh, I forgot what wattage, 15 or 20 watts, 15 watts, uh, USB 3.0 ports, 15 volts, three amps. 45 watts. Of course, you have your standard cigarette lighter adapter right there, and then you have those two DC barrel plugs, 5512s or whatever they're called. You have two of those running at 10 amps total. The front has a fairly decent display, which displays everything except for the temperature, which you can get in the app, but it doesn't show it on here. I don't know why it doesn't do that. I feel like it should. Other than that, the screen's pretty good. It tells you what you're taking in and it tells you what you're putting out. And since it has a UPS mode with pass-through charging, it will actually take in power from the wall and then tell you what the input is specifically for the batteries 
differently from what you're putting out, which I personally think is a must have feature. It's like a core dependency when it comes to UPS modes. So you definitely need that pass through charging that way you're not constantly draining or charging your batteries while you're trying to use it as a UPS. If I had to throw a negative at it, I would say with the UPS, it's still about a 20 millisecond UPS device, which means, and your mileage may vary because all the computers out there are different. If you're trying to use this as a main UPS device for a sensitive electronic equipment, like a home computer, for example, if your power flickers or goes out, this thing might shut down your computer. Again, depending on your power supply on your computer, it might shut that down and do a reboot because of that power loss. But like I've said before in previous videos, if you have, let's say, one of those uh, cyber power backup or uh, APS, I think is the other one, those UPSs that you can get for your servers or your computers, those things usually don't have a lot of capacity. They last like three minutes, but their switch time are like four to six milliseconds. So if you were to take this, put it behind one of those smaller UPSs, you would have multiple hours worth of runtime on your, let's say a home computer, for example, just in case you wanted to game with the lights off. As for capacity, I mentioned before that I ran a capacity test. I got 1.88 kilowatt hours worth of capacity out of this, which puts me at right around 92% efficiency. You okay? And I looked up the... Did you get it? Good. But the good news is, is that this thing is only going to cost uh, $1,223 up to like $1,400, depending on whether or not you find it on sale. I will, of course, link to this in the description down below. But when I recorded this video, it was at that $1,223 range. But this is a new product. So they're doing the sell thing to get it out there to do the launch, etc. So if the price goes up, I would not be surprised. Because honestly, at $1,223, that makes this thing a pretty good deal. I would expect probably a $1,350 for a normal price range or 1300 bucks for like a normal price range and still be a good deal. And before I jump into the conclusion, I do wanna say it does not have a light. I personally like lights on batteries. However, I cannot fault them for not putting in a light. You can have all the battery lights you want to. I just personally have found them very useful. This one does not have one. That's okay. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It just kind of hurt me a little bit inside. You're, you're gonna be okay. We'll cry. Okay, TLDR conclusion or TLDW. Overall, this thing has a lot of features, a lot of outputs, and it has a smart app. All of this is really nice, especially the outputs with the RV and the Anderson plug. But the app, I'm gonna label as it has potential. It's got a little bit of graphics to it. It's fairly useful for what it does, but it doesn't do one of the key features that this battery offers, which is changing the charging rate on it. It's not an option within the app. However, I think that because this thing can do firmware updates, that's right, connect to Wi-Fi, do firmware updates, and you can use the app and update the app, I think that in the future, adding features is going to be something that they can easily do. For capacity, two kilowatt hours is like entry level for the new mega lineup. You can add on to it and you can even get bigger battery devices that have wheels, can do up to like 4,000 watts, just insane batteries that are really like hardcore RV people you know, or obsessed battery people like myself would want. But if for whatever reason you don't want or can't get the bigger one, you can get this one and then you can add on batteries later on for only $800. I mean, you're literally doubling the capacity for $800. I think that's pretty good. Now that I think about it, I mean, this thing takes like, let's see, 12 to 150. I wonder if I can just like hook up, you know, 24 volt batteries to it, lithium iron, and just charge it off a battery. I don't know. That's how you start fires. Anyways, for the capacity and output capability this thing has at 12, 1300 bucks, that's a pretty good value overall. Opus is definitely building a name for itself. And this battery right here, I would say for the most part, checks off all the boxes that I would find to be crucial to even considering investing in, you know, some sort of emergency use battery or an RV battery. It has a pure sine wave output with 2,500 watts of capability. The UPS, the backup battery option, something that allows you to not focus on just using this for things you want to do, but also using this every single day. And in a pinch, if you have enough capability, you can charge this thing in 45 minutes. Again, maybe not do that all the time, but it's an option. That's pretty cool. Well, guys, as always, I will link to this in the description down below if you want to check out and get some more information. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Opes, for sending this out. Like and subscribe below and have yourself a great day.